This is the first 3D printed home in the state of Ohio uh, that we've been able to find. We have looked high and low. That means that we started with a printer on the sl concrete slab in a computer program and we mixed a cement process continuously uh, for about five or six days and, and printed the home uh, one layer at a time and until completion. Why 3D print a home? When it comes to building, really what I've discovered over the past probably 28 years is that the, as the longer I've lived, the less help is available. It just seems like automation is really taking over and we're still building homes the same way we've built them for centuries with two by fours, right? And a saw and, and a lot of labor and, and physical work to get that completed. And so for us, 3D printing was an opportunity to see if this was something that could be a different way to do it. And what we found is that it absolutely is a game changer because now instead of needing three to five years to train an individual to get them ready to, to be autonomous to build a home, uh, a lot of the young people coming out of high school today are very familiar with, with electronics, with tablets, even in 3D printing. You know, almost every school now has 3D printing classes and a lot of these young people are excited about it. And so for us, the opportunity to get people who have the skills to, to do the technical part of it is actually easier than the, than the part of it where you have to do the, the build. And now instead of a crew of four to six guys to build a house, two guys are, are printing the home. We all know the, the, the weather that we've been having, the tornadoes and those type of things. And so these homes are much more durable in inclement weather than what a, a typical build is. And so that's, in, in a nutshell, that's really what has got us excited about this new technology. Is this a game changer in our affordable housing crisis? This is a game changer. This has the potential to be a game changer. It's possible to do affordable housing, but the demand for housing right now is so high. So any home that you build has a demand for it. And so on the affordable level, if you take the right steps, for example, uh, lean manufacturing, so that we're working under the principles that will create a home at a, a lower cost, and we're able to take that to market with builder and developer partners that are willing to pass those savings on, then it can absolutely meet affordable housing needs. But it's going to take a partnership between printers, builders, developers to get that moved on to the final purchaser. And when you have a housing market, it's really hard to sell a house for fifty or eighty thousand dollars less than what you could get it on the open market if there's not some way to make sure that those people are getting that need, that have the need are actually getting the homes and getting in those homes. So that's really the challenge in a, in a, uh, in a free market, right? Because if, if you lower the price of the home considerably, there are people that are gonna wanna buy those homes and flip them. So there's a balance. Can it, can it meet the needs of affordable housing? Absolutely. With, it has the technology to do it. It's gonna take people to drive that. What was the cost to build this house? Right now, we are below $200 a square foot on this home, which is R&D, right? So we have a lot and a lot of nice features in this home. Um, the, f the fireplace, the upgraded porches on the outside. We've really put a lot into this. So really our all-in costs, including, including the landscaping, including the outside work, uh, is under $200 a square foot, which is great. Like I'm ab absolutely thrilled about that because uh, modular homes here locally are starting at $200 for a very plain modular home with vinyl siding and drywall on the inside, carpet, uh, you know, very low end trim and cabinetry. So we're beating that market already. We know it's doable. We're probably in the 160 range um, right now instead of 200. And you're saying typically traditional build is 200. That's a starting point. So $40 a square foot at a thousand square feet, you're forty thousand dollars less. At fifteen hundred square feet, you're sixty thousand dollars less. So a considerable savings on a home, absolutely. In a home that's just as comfortable, more durable, and longer lasting because the finishes don't have to be redone. Your exterior walls, you're not have to, you don't have to worry about the vinyl siding blowing off in a windstorm. What can ensure that savings will be passed on? to a buyer. That really comes down to people. I don't know how to explain that. Like we live in a free market society. And so all, you know, every time we sell a home, 
the new owner of that home has the right to buy and sell that home anytime that they want. We're probably going to be marketing the homes at a higher price because it's necessary to be closer to what the demand is and then offering some incentives to the buyers. What are the pros and cons of a 3D printed home? So your interior and your exterior can be printed and left as is. We, we here in this house, we painted some of it. We, we left some of it raw so that you can see the difference. And also you'll notice in the bathrooms, one of the showers we left just 3D printed. We, we waterproofed it and painted it with an enamel paint. And then the other one we put ceramic tile in just to show different finishes. And also uh, that goes down to cost, right? So the cost of tiling that other shower is probably close to $3,200. If you can do that without tiling that wall, you're $3,200 less. But you can also plaster these walls. Uh, as far as the, the cons on it, I would say the cons are if, if somebody is a DIYer and they think they want to knock down the walls in the future, that's probably not uh, maybe the best system for that because it is going to be quite invasive to come in and knock these down. I could almost see um, the opposition lobbyists saying you're taking jobs away. Yeah, you know, a few people have said that. I've been in this business for over 30 years and the, the reality is the jobs are already going away. We're looking for a way to be a force multiplier because we want to take the, the existing skilled trades that are there who cannot build homes fast enough in this country today to meet the need. And now we can come in and by taking a framing crew who might be on a job for two weeks, now we can reduce their load on the job to three days to get the roof put on. So now that same crew that was building one home can do four in the same amount of time. So is it removing jobs? It is definitely reducing the amount of labor required. It's, I don't believe we're getting rid of any jobs. I feel like those jobs are very necessary and that the, this industry is, is right now at every level crying for more help. By being able to produce more homes, we're actually going to drive the housing price down. We're 270,000 housing units short in the state of Ohio. How much of a dent is 3D printing going to make in that and when? I would project that you're probably not going to see much of a dent in it for maybe in the next five to 10 years because there is the, um, there is the, the fact that people need to invest in equipment. It's very expensive to get into 3D printing. So the equipment is very expensive. And really the homes are moving back from the, from the McMansions. Now we're going back down towards smaller homes. And really as we look towards that, and I think that not only are, are the building, the builders needing to take a look that way, but also regulatory. So as we get out here in the townships, most townships have 13 to 1500 square foot minimums. That's all they'll let you build. I've been watching the micro and the mini home markets. Everywhere that those are built in any metropolitan area, they're sold before they're built. And you think about, it's possible in 2024 to have a home that you're, if you're a single person or a couple that you wanna have a small home, you wanna travel, you wanna do those things, it's literally possible to have a home that you own for the price of a car payment. You see this as the future. Yeah, I think this is the future, especially for, for um, my kids, right? Going forward, my kids are in their, are in their 20s. Um, I have two sons that work with me in the building, in the building industry. And, and really, as we move forward, the technology that they've learned in school, they can use that technology now to, to greater effect with this new technology. And that's what I see is that going forward, you're gonna see more and more of this. Is it gonna meet every need of every person? No, absolutely it isn't. But if we can meet enough to make a difference, you know, stay tuned, I guess all I can say, we, we are hoping to continue to improve as we go forward.